what's going on with Locke's body? Will we see Teresa again? And which lost actor does Damon most want to see on Dancing with the Stars? We'll have answers to those questions and more in today's official Lost audio podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. We're here with executive producers Damon Lindelof and Carlton Cuse to tell you guys why this place is death. They'll also pre-hash our upcoming episode entitled 316, which airs Wednesday, February 18th at 9 p.m., followed by a brand new episode of Life on Mars. And finally, they are, of course, here to answer, potentially, some of your fan questions. To get your questions read on our podcast, or at least made fun of, submit them to blogs.abc.com slash asklost. One word. Here now are Damon and Carlton. Buenos dias, Damon. Wow, a fa- foreign tongue this morning. Hello, Carlton. We. Oui. Uh, <laughs> what's going on, Damon? We're uh, we're doing a podcast apparently. Sitting uh, on the so couch. Sitting on the couch. We got uh, our wonderful producer Chris White here today with his uh, high tech cardboard box with microphones on it, <laughs> and uh, we spare no expense for you guys. <laughs> this is a very classy podcast. We're going to rehash the most recent episode of Lost. This place is death. Really a nice, just a feel good theme. Uh, you know. The, I think as the season goes on, the viewers will come to see that the word dead or death appears in many of the titles this year. Right. Ironically, we were just talking about the writer's offices that day and uh, and decided yes. to title the episode This Place is Death and uh, and gave it to uh, gave a line to Charlotte to justify it. It's actually more fun than death right. to be in the writer's offices. <laughs> it really is. Slightly. I mean, I've never been dead, so I don't know. <laughs> Locke looks like he's having a good time. Locke's looks Locke's- like he. Looks like he's relaxing. He's yeah. It's, there's not a lot of stress for him at the moment, which is more than I can say for us. That's true. We have a lot of stress. We're we're trying to get the finale written right now, but we are taking a little brief interlude to have this podcast. So right. let's get right to a little recap here, Damon. So this was the big Rousseau story that we were promising the viewers about, was it not? Um, yes. Well, we said we'd be seeing Rousseau again, and we sure did. And uh, as opposed to doing it, because since, since the Rousseau was shot last year by. Uh, by Kimi and his pals, the only way to do it was uh, was time travel. So that when we were sitting around going, wow, the fans really want more Rousseau, let's introduce time travel into the show. That's probably the much. best way to do it. Yeah. So and, we hope you're happy. And you saw Brennan and Robert and Lacombe. And, of course, Montand. So and the big mystery of Montand's arm has finally been revealed. The, the truth for us was that we really didn't really give much of a damn about telling Rousseau's backstory, but we were incredibly determined to explain to the audience how Montand lost his arm. And what we, we were going to go a lot further with it, but if you look very carefully, there is a violin case that Montand is carrying around. <laughs> so the whole idea that Montand was, a violinist. You know, was an aspiring concert violinist once he finished this research trip, the fact that he lost his arm is, is all the more tragic. Yeah. Well, it apparently was... The arm kind of was the least of his problems, ultimately, wasn't it? That I mean, is that is true. He got sucked down there by the by Smokey into uh, is that? Would you say that's Smokey's main house or his summer palace? Uh, I would say it's his Camp David. Oh, we, we, okay. when he's not in the when he's not where he lives, that's just yes. where he hangs out. We refer to it internally as the declivity. The declivity in the temple wall. Yes, exactly. Well, that n- not necessarily saying that that is the temple, but that is an, perhaps an outer wall of the temple. Yes, there, the temple would not be just on the other side. You yes. might have to hike a little bit. Will we be returning to this location again, Carlton? Damn straight we will, Damon. And are we supposed to infer that, that as a result of descending into the declivity when Robert and the rest of the team went down there, that they came back a little different? They came back a little wacky, and uh, Rousseau was very concerned about their behavior, that whatever happened to them down there in their encounter with Smokey did alter them, and not for the better. They didn't seem wacky to me. They seemed perfectly rational, except until Robert tries to shoot Rousseau, of yeah, course. Yeah, that wasn't good. But then, of course, Rousseau had already popped. We, I assume that was Brennan and Lacombe. Yes. So it's, it's which, who went wacky first, the That's chicken true. or the egg? And, you know, we also saw a very sane Rousseau, at least at the beginning of this, very uh, kind of wonderful actress. She's kind of 
Rousseau was kind of a nice girl until everything went haywire for her, wasn't she? Yeah, well, uh, you know, the island will do that to you, especially when people are flashing in and out of existence and disappearing and... Oh, it's just a it's just a wild and woolly place, isn't it? That is a very wild and woolly place. So, I don't think we can really say too much about uh, episode five hundred seven, other than it's called three sixteen, which is confusing enough in itself. Speaking but. of confusing, when Carlton says episode five hundred seven, which is the next week you're saying uh, the next episode you're seeing, we we actually wrote five hundred six and five hundred seven fairly simultaneously. Carlton and I wrote both those scripts. You know, one of them is called the Life and Death of Jeremy Bentham. The other is 316. 316. And for reasons that will become apparent to you once you've seen both episodes, they can sort of be watched in either order. But we actually felt like the order that made more sense um, and was a, was cooler was to show um, 507 first. This has only happened once before in the history of the show. For those uh, for those of you diehard fans, uh, we challenge you to figure out when that was. But it was way back. Way back in season one. In season one. So uh, anyway... 316 felt like it was better to see in front of the life and uh, death of Jeremy Bentham. And that episode is uh, by, as, it, as the title might infer, you know, has to do with Locke. Mm. And, uh, but I think there's probably some good information to get in 316 before you, we get to explaining how it was that Locke, um, well, I guess if it's called the life and death, I would assume that we're going to find out. How Locke what, ended up in that coffin. That's right. It's exciting. That's good. Well, uh, can't wait. We're we're, um, we're blasting along here today, folks. We're not going to take up a lot of your precious time, and we're going to go right to. I wouldn't really use the word blasting. Questions. <laughs> All right, Carlton, you want to go first? You're I do. obviously very excited. I am very excited. Okay, go for it. Who's this from? Okay, I, there's a there's a sort of a theme to my questions today, and okay. this is from Lost Needs More Canadians, Ooh. and this <laughs> is from Red Deer in Alberta, Canada. Okay, which cast member of Lost would you like to see become a successful cast member of the show Dancing with the Stars? Wow, hmm, wow, that is a an excellent question. I, I think the obvious answer here is Just, Hurley. Did you see that Steve Wozniak is going to be on Dancing with the Stars this season? No, I didn't see that. Yes. What are they paying the you? The Woz. To, what are they? What are they? <laughs> what are they paying you to plug Dancing with the Stars? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, I did not see that, yes, but I will he be. Is. I will be tuning in because Lawrence uh, Taylor and the Woz going head to head. That's Come on. unbelievable. I, You're not really interested in what I, what, how I want to answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> you just were like, oh, here's my opportunity to make. No, my, no, no, Hurley, please, yes. please, tell me why. I Hurley. would like to see Jorge. Uh, because I believe he could win Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've seen Jorge's moves, um, and uh, they are impressive, to say the least. Good. And that, that that would be my guess. Okay, and I do care. David. Okay. Well, I can't wait to see what the emerging theme of your questions is, Carlton. Okay. But, but I have some suspicions. They all, right. all involve you getting paid by ABC for plugging <laughs> their shows. My question is from Toad B., in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ann Arbor. Oh, home of the Dharma Initiative. That's from, that, that is my understanding. In the episode Jughead, when Desmond finds Teresa after talking to the custodian at Oxford, is Teresa in the same kind of time trance as Eloise the Rat or George Minkowski from The Freighter? This is a serious question, Carlton, because uh, we often goof around. I, I, would think. S- I would say that's a very perceptive uh, observation. I mean, clearly, uh, we, we, we kind of have some information from the constant that there was some research going on with Faraday that involved other subjects, and it's entirely plausible that his uh, friend Teresa might have been someone who he tried to do a little consciousness traveling with, and uh, things didn't work out too well. I really hope we see Teresa again, because... I'd like to know the answer to this question. Well, uh, I think you might. Ooh! That's exciting. You heard it here first, That's folks. Good. All right, Damon, here we go. All right, you ask your silly questions, I, and I'll ask the questions people want to answer. Hi, Damon and Carlton. This is good. You answer Canadian questions, right? <laughs> the Oceanic Six needs to take John Locke's body yes. back with them yep. to the island. Mm-hmm. Oceanic 815 also had a body on board, Christian Shepherd. So my question is, was Christian Shepherd's body in any way a factor in the 815 flight making it to the island? And if Locke might not be gone for good, as Ben suggested, is resurrection of a sort possible for Christian? Hmm. I know you guys said definitively that he was dead, but is he more than just an image the island is using to communicate? 
Well, I'm afraid we don't answer <laughs> Canadian questions. But that was a really well thought out. Uh, that was a good question. There's nothing against okay. Canada. Uh, there are mer- many wonderful people there, but we don't answer them. No, in, in all seriousness, um, I think that this is an excellent question. And in, in episode, uh, the next episode, 316, uh, you might find someone is talking about um, John Locke's body in relation to Christian Shepherd's body, and uh, the word proxy might be mentioned. Uh, that That's your word for the day, proxy. Proxy. Awesome. Okay. All right. Um, all right, You're Carlton. up, dude. I said only, only straight, serious questions. Um, this is one that I, I've never been asked before. Okay. And I think... Uh, Jay Daly from Chicago, Illinois, wants to know, and this is one that I know you can answer. What happened to Bopo, Sun's dog? Was the dog put in a kennel before Sun and Jin got on Flight 815? If so, did Sun pick up Bopo after getting back from the island? Good God. Bopo was with Libby and Kate's plane, and they're having their own spinoff series. Well, there you go. There you go. Now, um, Coming soon on ABC. We... Um, Bopo, I'm just going to say right now, Bopo might be one of those mysteries that just doesn't get answered by the end of year six. This uh, is, Bopo is right there at the top of mysteries <laughs> that we don't think are mysteries. Yes. <laughs> of which there will be many hounding us at the end of oh, the show. Oh, hounding us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good God. Next question. Okay. Final question, Carlton. Final question. You have a final one, then I have a final All one. All right. This is, sticking with my theme... This is from Jesse in Toronto, Ontario. Hey, guys, wow. one of your loyal Canadian fans here, Damon. Great. Just had a question from the season four episode, The Other Woman. During that therapy session with Juliet and Harper, Harper mentions that Juliet looks like her. I was wondering if this was a reference to either Ben's mother or Ben's childhood friend, Annie, both of whom share a resemblance with Juliet. Thanks. Uh, I, th- I, that's a very insightful question. And I, and I, I, I think hopefully you'll be getting the answer before the series is over, but you're asking exactly the right question. My therapist says <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that basically your mother is the only one who counts. And so if the, it, you keep sort of trying to replicate that through your life. Okay. Dear sneaky executive producers, you are so busted, says Stacy G Uh-oh. from Raleigh NC. I'm not sure where all that zombie talk originated, but you guys have known all along that season five would, in fact, be the zombie season. Jin and Danielle raised from the dead. Jin's lips even looked a little zombie-ish when they pulled him to shore. Could have been the sun and salt water, but my money is on zombie. And I have no doubt that once Locke is brought back to the island, he will also take zombie form and live again. What's next? Nikki and Paolo up from their graves? That's it. No question. Just wanted you to know that the jig was up. Or is it gig? Okay, that's my question. Is it jig or gig? I think it's I think it's jig. I think a gig I think it's jig. The jig is up. Like I, I keep thinking of like some sort of, you know, at you know, old like Warner Brothers crime drama. The jig is up. Damn it. If you think about though the origin of it, the jig is up. Was it like is it some sort of dance thing? Yeah. Just to go back to your that's it. it's like basically everybody's kind of dancing around and the guy says, All right, everybody. The jig is up. The jig it's is prohibition. up. Yeah, exactly. Hide the bottles. Right. Here we come with the Tommy guns. So I'm gonna go with jig. And I'm gonna say, Stacy, we are busted. That's yeah. it. You you have done it. People ask us all the time, has a fan ever figured out the show? The answer is yes, Stacy, you have. Season five. Season is five in fact is zombie the zombie season. season, subversively hidden under the guise of time travel. Alrighty, well, well there we why go. even continue? <laughs> great podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, by we great, I mean mediocre. I'm sorry we couldn't get to this question, which is, you know, uh, Damon Carlton, if you wrote Star Wars episodes one through three, what major changes would you have made? <laughs> I'm glad that you didn't get to that question either. That's for another time. Yeah, let's start with uh, okay. the Jar Jar. <laughs> Star Wars' own Nikki and Paolo. <laughs> Um, All right, guys. Well, thanks for checking us out this week. We will be back to you very soon with another Lost podcast. And uh, hope you enjoy the show this week. And thanks, as always, for paying attention. Go Canada. Bye. That's it for this podcast. Make sure you submit your fan questions frequently and often at blogs.abc.com slash asklost. And, of course... Tune in for our next episode, 316, Aaron Wednesday, February 18th at 9 p.m., only on ABC.